I would like to show you this Marvin Essential window with the flesh fin applied. This window was designed to be used in a retrofit application, meaning you don't have to rip out your stucco or your siding on your existing window to replace your old window with a new one. One of the benefits of that is not having to tear out your stucco, one, and two, you don't mess with any of the waterproofing that was done originally with the house. So I'm gonna show you a way to do it this is construction. There are a lot of different ways to do things. So let's get started. One of the first things you're going to want to do before you remove any of your old sashes and install this window is look for previous water damage. If you have water damage coming from around the window or somewhere else, you may want to have that inspected first by a professional to make sure you don't have any leaks coming from something other than your old existing window. Because if you're replacing this window with a new one because you see leaks here and you replace it with a new one, you still may have a leak because it may be coming from somewhere else. So have that first checked by a professional. The next step is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the new window you received is gonna fit your opening before you remove the existing sashes. I would check the measurement of this opening and check the measurement of the window to make sure it's gonna fit before you tear, tear everything out. Okay, now that we're assured that the new window is gonna fit this opening, it's time to remove the old existing sashes. If you got windows that are called double hungs, the ones that go up and down, oftentimes you can lift those up and there's a way to take and tilt those out or even take them from one side to another. If you have a gliding window, the ones that go side to side, you will have to take out the, the moving sash first, lift it up, remove it, and on some of the stationary ones, you may have to cut out the existing sash to get this opening. Everyone's a little different. You're gonna to have to have some basic construction skills, so hopefully you can figure that out. Now, the next step that Marvin recommends is any protrusion of the stucco over a 16th of an inch is to go ahead and measure two inches from the, the frame of the window up, and you're gonna to have to knock down any high spots in the stucco that's over a 16th of an inch. So you can use a grinder with a good stucco disc, and you can grind down any high spots. Keep in mind, because this is a retrofit situation, that you wanna make it look nice and pretty, so when you put the window in, it doesn't, their stucco doesn't look like it's a mess. Now, be sure to clear out any debris that's in the existing track. Be sure to get all the corners. As you can see here on this window, there is existing weep holes. We wanna make sure that those weep holes are clear. Now take a good quality sealant and seal all of the corners. Seal all along in here and along in here on all four corners. Now get some good decay resistant treated wood and cut it to fit this area in here. Now this piece of wood is gonna sit on top of this little track. So if any water does get through here, it won't be touching this piece of wood. Now I'm gonna dry fit the window just to make sure it fits in there okay. It feels pretty good, it looks good. Now it is recommended to clean around the window and clean the whole surface area around the existing frame. Now if you ordered this window with these jam brackets, now would be the time to go ahead and install them. All you have to do is take the bracket, slide it into the slot, line the, the hole up that goes in through the jam, through the bracket, and then screw it into place. Now I like to just to check the level of the window so I know what kind of window frame I'm dealing with. Be sure to use a high quality level, which this is not. This is for demonstration purposes. I wanna make sure that the window's level. If I know that this is level and I know I'm gonna set this window in, right off the bat, I know it's level. And then all I need to do is just square it up into the frame. Now we're going to apply a high grade multi-purpose sealer around the whole face of this frame. We wanna make sure it's approximately a 3 8 bead around it. And we're gonna stay approximately three quarters of an inch away from the existing weep holes on this existing window. This is my display. We're gonna suspend disbelief, but we're gonna go ahead and pretend that we're putting sealant all the way around this perimeter of this frame, being mindful of keeping clear of the existing weep holes. When setting in your new window, be sure not to touch any of the sealant that's around there. You don't wanna mess that up. Carefully center the window in the opening. Push to make sure you get good contact with the sealant that's in there and then we'll go ahead and fasten it from the inside. Now that I got the window centered in the opening, I'm gonna go ahead and put a screw on the top one just to get it started so the window doesn't fall out on me. You may wanna have a partner help you. I'm gonna be sure not to overdrive it and just, just enough so I can put some shims in. 
just like with any window installation, you want to make sure that everything is square, everything is plumb, and everything is level. You could also take a regular framing square, which I highly suggest because some levels can be off a little bit, and check all four corners of your window to make sure that everything is square. And also you're going to want to check to make sure everything is true, which may be very difficult on an existing opening. True meaning that the window is not twisted. Some people will take a string from each corner and cross-string it to make sure the string touches in the center. If there's a gap between the string, string, you know your window's out a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shim the window. There are different types of shims. I do recommend that you do not use a wood shim because wood over time, if it gets moisture gets in there, the shim could rot. I like using these composite shims, plastic shims, and these work really good because these break off really easily and you can stack them and put them behind all these. So we'll go ahead and do that. Be sure not to over tighten the, the screw because you can actually cause a bow in your frame. Now that you got all your shims and everything is screwed into place, double check to make sure that all everything is level and square, especially on a double hung. If you over tighten these screws, you'll end up having air infiltration through the sides or the window itself can fall out if you over tighten it. Be sure to use a high quality level. Make sure that everything is level. Be sure that all four corners are square and take measurements this way. Check this clearing, this clearing, this clearing. They should all be identical. Then on this side, check this one, check the center and check this side. They should all be the same. And then go on the exterior and check for the same measurements. You could actually have a window that's actually in or out. What may look good on the inside may not look good on the outside. And once you get all that done, we can cut our shims off to make sure everything's flush. Now it's time to go ahead and seal between the window and the stucco. Be sure to go around all the sides and along the bottom, but be sure to leave a gap at the bottom. So if any water does get in there, it has a way to escape. Check the operation of the window. Works great. Well, I hope this video helped you understand how to install a Marvin essential window with flush fin. And if you found this video informative, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and have a great day.